Aloha, everyone. It's your girl, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. And today, Sister Power, it, our mission is that women everywhere will learn to live as sisters, to respect each other's differences, to heal each other's wounds, to promote each other's progress, and to benefit from each other's knowledge. We have such a fabulous show for you ladies here, Black Girl Magic for Wellness, Mind, Body, and Soul. And I challenge each human being to stop what you're doing right now, stop what you're doing, bring in your friends, because Black Magic is gonna give you some tips that are gonna keep you motivated, keep you encouraged, and keep you inspired. So sit back, grab a cup of tea, relax, and we, I'm gonna introduce you to our guest, Ty Hawkins, welcome. Thank you, Malo. And our everlasting, always guest, Sequoia Carr Brown, welcome to Sister Power. Aloha, hey, beautiful people. <laughs> Yay, this is so good. You know, we have so much going on. We have, you know, people who don't want to wear their masks. We were talking about that earlier. People don't want to get vaccinations. We've got the Karens that are acting up. I need to talk to you, Ty, because you're a licensed acupuncturist. You're an herbalist and you're a massage therapist. Tell us about your business. All of the above, yes. Um, we actually just moved locations. Um, we are an open space acupuncture and herb apothecary. We just, um, just starting to like unfold our new apothecary. We've always had um, a customized herbal tincture pharmacy as since the pandemic began. Essentially, when we closed right at the beginning of the pandemic, we knew that our community still really needed our support. And um, we knew people were also not really comfortable coming out. So we started making herbs um, and we started delivering herbs to people. And that was really the start of our apothecary as like a our new business inside of our already um, built up acupuncture clinic, which has been actually really booming since the pandemic started. And it's been a refreshing thing to see because I've seen so many people actively taking responsibility for their own health and their own wellness and realizing that stress and all of this external factors really do affect our internal wellness and our actual pain that we carry in our bodies. Um, so that's been really amazing to see and support through community work um, and acupuncture and herbs. And we love all of it. What is the name of your uh, company is? Yes, so my business is Olanani Aki Oasis and Olanani in Hawaiian means beautiful life. And really for us, a beautiful life is about having balance and being happy from the inside out. And that beautiful life will serve the entire community by kind of uplifting everyone around you. So that's what we're all about. Yeah, shine that light. We need the light. Now, whatever it takes to get us to reset, we need to revive, and we need to just get some type of release. And Se Sequoia, that's where you come in. I, I love the name of your company, Strange Fruit Express. Tell us about that. Well, that manifested out of first the love for uh, Billie Holiday. She's one of my favorite artists. But just what the song meant, and even that it was written by a Jewish man, makes it even more profound. And uh, I felt that my ancestors were speaking to me. I was a history major at my university, and uh, I was receiving a lot of pushback when I would include the African-American experience. So uh, I felt like those strange fruit that were lost, denied, killed, destroyed, that information, that knowledge that they had needed to come forward. So, uh, the, so those shoulders that we stand upon, I'm being that voice for past, future, and present voices by using the arts. I bring in American history of our unsung heroes. I fuse that with fine art and dance to tell our stories. And sometimes I just do art just for art, the sake of art, art's sake rather, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, we have different forms of reviving ourselves. We can do yoga, we can meditate, um, we can even dance. 
and, and my, you know, some people meditate. I'm a praying girl. I'm going to pray, pray, pray. That's just me. So, Ty, tell us, you know, because of this COVID, I wanted to ask you about that, you know, because now you do massage therapy. And how has this re affected your business, this COVID-19 pandemic? affected your business since it's hands-on absolutely so in terms of massage i i don't do that much massage i do mostly acupuncture and herbs um but we used to have a clinic that was kind of what they call community style acupuncture which is just one big open room there's seats kind of close to each other and you know it's really a community kind of feeling um but when COVID hit, we really had to shift gears because people didn't feel safe being in a room with a bunch of other people. Um, and it wasn't relaxing for them anymore. So we, um, we basically kind of geared back a little bit. So we're still seeing in a few patients at a time, but we have little pods around them. So everybody's curtained off and in their own kind of section. So they feel safe and secure. Um, really just people being compliant with how we know, at least the things that we definitely know stop the spread of the disease, like wearing a mask, you know, wearing a mask, spreading things out a bit, social distancing. Um, we got some extra, you know, air filters and just the protocols of cleaning. It's, it's not rocket science. It's just having the right protocols and being able to fall back on them when things do go awry, like if there is exposure issues, which is just part of how we're going to have to move through the next, you know, who knows, six to 12 months. Um, but like I said, I was, I was a little concerned at the beginning and definitely we started this herb the herb side of our business as an offset, like we might need this to kind of carry the business for a while. Um, but what we found is actually we're busier than ever. And I honestly, in what I've seen is it's people's awareness of their own kind of internal um, mental or emotional stress manifesting in their bodies. So like, just to give an example, like I will, be working on, you know, somebody's shoulder injury and we work on their shoulder injury. It's, you know, they sleep wrong. They come in to get their neck fixed and they, they walk away. They never talk about this being the result of, you know, some kind of mental, emotional stress or trauma. It's just physical pain, right? Those same people that never talked about pain and emotions being connected were coming in and telling me, I am so stressed out and I feel it right here. You know, instead of I slept funny and I feel it here, like they had the awareness and the consciousness of mind to say that actually that is connected. Like the body and the mind connection has been really, I feel like bubbled up to the surface. And in some ways it's really uncomfortable, but I do think it is a really powerful step for people to actually take their wellness into their own hands, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sequoia, yeah. what is your definition of wellness? Well, just to kind of pick up on Ty's concept, that somatic element of wellness, right? And being, and uh, I had take that approach with my work uh, with Strange Food Express and the fitness classes that I, uh, created. So wellness to me and self-care is a form of self-defense, particularly for us. I think that we carry, along with the regular everyday stress of just uh, stresses of living our lives, we also as a culture, as a people across the African diaspora, have a kind of an epigenetic memory that kind of can muster up some really negative harsh feelings that do manifest in the mind, body, and spirit as certain types of ailments and such. So uh, my work is all about uh, reconnecting to the ancestors and our, our ways of knowing up against the, the way that we've been indoctrinated to try to heal. You know, it's, it's a mainstream way that does not work for us, was not even designed for us. So why even go there? So I'm all about 
our wellness, our self-care, our state of being is connected to remembering where we came from and who we are and um, making that mind, body, spirit connection, soul connection somatically. Yeah, and you know, there's fun ways to do it. I know that you ladies at Thai, you have an African dance class on Saturday. Yes. Uh, that is awesome. <laughs> and it's outdoors and you can just shake it off. And that is so important to release ourselves. And so um, tell us a little bit about the dance class and how it affects us mentally and physically and spiritually. So I will first speak just from my personal experience. Um, and dance to me absolutely is movement medicine. It's really, it's probably the first thing on my self-care list of things to do when I'm like really feeling funky. It's because I haven't danced in too long. So for me, it really is very about, very much about somatic, a somatic release at the same time it is fully grounding and really about connecting for me. Um, especially, so with African dance, there's always this connection between the dancer and the drummer. The dance and the drum are never separated. This is a togetherness. It's not like you can have the dance department and the, the, the percussion department separately. They exist together. Um, and that's, it's the beauty of that, that foundation that starts with connectivity because then you can feel it, that connectivity between the dancers, between the drummers, and you really have a communion of sorts. And everyone is there in it and in their presence, which really is like, to me, it's like going to church sometimes. And that's, that's how it feels because I, when I'm in the dance, I'm fully connected and present in this moment. Whatever is happening around me, or even if I'm having a terrible week, if I can have a moment of dance, I have respite from whatever it is because I feel in flow. And mm -hmm. like in Chinese medicine, everything is about flow. Essentially wellness is being in balance and being in flow without any blockage or obstruction. And to me, when I'm dancing, I can actually move through obstructions that otherwise feel really stuck in, and stagnant. Um, and so, the beauty of the dance in the community is that connectivity, but there's also this really awesome space just to be an individual and, and let it all out however your body lets it all out and all of our bodies are different. And that's another aspect of um, African dance that I truly, truly love. There's a diversity in the oneness and there's peace, there's peace there. And yeah, and you know, yeah. with your help, Sequoia, Every Saturday we meet in, in, in a beautiful garden and you have this Orisha fit class that happens every Saturday from 11 to 1230. Tell us about that. Well, Orisha fit is all about similarly this mind, body, spirit connection. And it's, all, it's like a physical affirmation uh, that connects us to our ancestors. I, we don't exactly invoke the spirits of the Orishas, but we take in uh, elements of African dance, um, fitness, uh, meditation, and we use those qualities of say, Oshun. I would ask my uh, uh, queens, fellow queens, you know, how are you feeling? Are you not feeling beautiful? Are you feeling bad about yourself, self-esteem? Well, let's, let's talk about Oshun beauty, fertility, wealth, right? All of those things. Let's wear yellow and gold. And this just like be uh, reaffirming to, of ourselves, our confidence. It's not ego-based. It's not arrogance. It's about coming together. As Ty said, it's a community, right? And embracing your true authentic self, that black girl magic that we have in there. And just, uh, just kind of pushing away the mainstream ways of, uh, being and knowing and coming into our own. So uh, it's a, a gradual little method that I developed over the years. Um, it's, I have right now is for 40 years and over or mature, you know, and um, it's just all about being 
we are reconnecting with yourself in mind, body, and spirit, and remembering our ancestors. Uh, for example, you know, yoga is very popular, and that's great, but in a sense, it's kind of been gentrified in a way that I think the true intention of it is being lost. And we as our uh, people, we don't really have anything like that in the society where you can just rattle off uh, our ancestors, our spirits in ways that affirm us. So this is just my way of going against the mainstream culture and finding something for us and by us. Oh, I love that. You know, also when we're doing something for ourselves, it also feels good when we're, both of you ladies do this every week, is when you give something back to your community. I know that Sisters in Park in Hawaii the nurses here at Queens Hospital are so overworked because of the pandemic. So my friends and I um, put together a post um, bag, a post, um, what is that? Post shift personal spa bag for the nurses oh, nice. to help them to pamper their, their feet, pamper their face, pamper themselves, um, you know, relax in the bath with the bubble baths we give. They were so appreciative. This is why I know that um, I, I work with Sisters Park Hawaii, work with Chi Edify, which is a Black nurses organization here, along with Dr. Um, Joanne Lozoya, Williams Lozoya, and Dr. El Cito. So it's not about what we have, it's about telling, taking what we have and doing as much as we can with it. And I want to come to you, Ty. What do you need, what do we need to know about the effectiveness of traditional Chinese medicine? Well, usually my first response is like, if something has been around and used by the most populous, one of the most populous countries in the world, there's probably something to it. Um, but really, it's, it's about tapping into your natural healing capabilities, which we all have. And I think it's really important for everybody to remember that, you know, and just be reminded of that, that our bodies are amazing. They're made to work through almost anything. And if you just give them a little bit, just a little bit of love, usually they like, our bodies will do amazing things. But we live in a world that doesn't um, honor or value rest and actual stillness. I just saw an ad, this was, it was interesting. It was like a Rihanna ad, it was some new luggage thing and it said, hashtag never still. And I was like, that's terrible. That is a terrible, terrible idea. You need stillness, we all need stillness, but it's, it's so foreign to our culture that the slowing down and the stillness feels like you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. So I like to tell people just reel it back in on your personal judgments of what you need to accomplish all the time and actually think about accomplishing some rest and some stillness sometimes because balance really is the key to life, at least in my perspective. So if you're going, 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 you better put, something on, on, put some time on the side for you to not be going. Mm. at least, you know, 60, 40, so that you can live a long and happy life and your body can be on board with you and not be giving you all kinds of negative, negative signals that you don't listen to. And then one day, all of a sudden, it gives you the biggest negative signal and you can't do anything but lay down, right? Mm -hmm. So I always advise people just to like, try to rest a little more, just a little more, because I know that you're you're not like all of us are not resting enough. I, it's just a guarantee. Yeah. You know, uh, Sequoia, you and I had this conversation. We always feel that we have to be, Oh, how are, oh, everything's fine. Well, you're not, you're not okay. And it's okay not to be okay. So, you know, Sequoia, how and why did you develop your concept around self-care as a business plan? Well, uh, I'd always had it, like I stated earlier, as a history major, I had received so much pushback from my professors uh, who, you know, didn't take the time to include the African-American experience in their work. Um, 
And uh, I saw that some of my fellow African Americans were dropping or feeling a certain way about themselves in a negative way. And uh, I said, you know, this is detrimental to our holistically to us, you know, to experience just being in academia for one. And I realized that I love the, the blood, sweat and tears, the work that our ancestors did, but they worked so hard. They were so busy with um, getting us our equality and justice on the books. But uh, along the way, we forgot how to take care of ourselves and like dealing with all of that negative energy that we internalize, right? And it manifests in so many different ways in our community um, of self-hate or destructive behaviors and uh, or even just thinking that it's normalizing the way we are treated. So my ancestor told me, strange food express girl and nobody got it. I've been in this oh over 25 years and they're like, nobody, what is that? Nobody wants, I was like, trust me, we're going to need it. And now more than ever, uh, we need to have uh, people like myself, uh, concepts, business plans where self-care is part of the package. Mm -hmm. um, so I created my uh, business plan. My, I changed my major. Um, I was double majoring and I went into interdisciplinary studies where I fused American history, dance, and fine art and a concept of holistic somatic kind of uh, healing. And I was guided through Dr. Professor Catherine Waddell Takara. I love her so much. She helped me to navigate through academia and helped me to learn the ways of the oppressor to protect myself. And from that, I, that was my business plan with my uh, major and I just launched it. And again, no one got it, but gradually over the years, it's coming around and it's used as an educational tool for educators. I do public speaking. I do these classes and workshops every now and then, but mostly a lot of stage production and collaborative projects that have taken me all around the world. And I'm really grateful and thankful to my ancestors and all of my mentors to help me along the way. Oh, uh, yeah, that's this is what it takes. It takes a village. Yeah. So, hi, what are the commonly used plants in herbal medicine? Oh, my goodness. There are so many. <laughs> oh, my God. I know echinacea. I know echinacea. You know echinacea. <laughs> oh, another big one that um, that's the, they've done a lot of research with, uh, with COVID, um, honeysuckle. Oh. Tell us about it. Honeysuckle is, in Chinese medicine, it's in a category called clear heat or resolved toxicity, but it's often used for upper respiratory issues, sore throat, stuffy nose. It's one of those, it basically kicks, kicks the pathogen out before it can get deeper into the system. And that's just one really basic one that's kind of like a food grade level of herb. And those are actually the most premium kinds of herbs. The best kind of herb you can take is one that you can eat on a daily basis that you're mm. actually getting in regularly. So um, red dates are also in um, Chinese herbs, goji berries, wheat. I mean, you name it, and it's probably an herb in Chinese medicine. Uh, but echinacea is also a good one that's you know generally for immune support. So there's a lot of immune support herbs that we um, started ordering and making for people to have kind of um, just feel like they have a good baseline of an immune shield, if you will. So astragalus is also really well known, um, one that's good for kind of just overall boosting the immune system. It can up regulate it or down regulate it. So if somebody's having like allergies and they have a hyperactive immune system, it can actually chill it out. Or if you're getting sick often and your, your immune system is not working ideally, astragalus can upregulate it. So a lot of herbs don't necessarily have, they do one thing. It's not like a pharmaceutical. They kind of work with the body and they can have different effects and often they're modulatory effects. So they don't just up or down. It's like it gets in the body Sees, assesses what the body needs and it goes kind of in the direction that the body needs it to go in. Wow, yeah, I like aloe vera as also. So uh, Sequoia, how may one find your company? And, and tell us if you have any upcoming events. 
Well, you can find me at my website, strangefruitexpress.com. And that's strange fruit. The express is X P R E S S dot com. Uh, and I'm also on LinkedIn. I don't do social media. Uh, I think it's detrimental to our spirit. I also, I practice Bhutto. So I'm trying, you know, that's about work at the, of your ego and toning that down. So I think social media could be a destructive uh, element in that. Um, I highly suggest if people try to wean themselves away from social media, I know there's a, a study uh, there, the Zuckerberg and all those guys with the Instagram, they very well know that uh, it's, that is wreaking havoc on the, um, the confidence of our girls. Uh, so, and there's a lot of anti-blackness going on through social media. So, and black fishing and all those type of things. So be careful with that stuff. Walk away, read a book, meditate, sleep, enjoy that. Be still as Ty said, and let things come into you, let your body speak to you and your mind and a beautiful, well-balanced spirit will follow. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. That, that, that's so important that we need to love ourselves first. Yes. It's all about self-love. And, and, and in closing, I want you ladies to, um, you know, talk to our audience. Do you think self-care should, can, or may look different for Black women, Ty? Hmm. That is a really good question. I mean, I feel like self-care looks different on everybody, just like dance looks different on everybody. And, and, and most of us, like for me, just being horizontal is self-care. But like for some people, being horizontal drives them crazy. So it, to me, again, it's like so personal and it's so individual. And whatever nourishes you, whatever it is that feeds you, do it more. That's all, you know, that's kind of my input. That's, that's my advice to everybody. Yeah, sure. what do you think? Uh, I, I like that too. Rest is important and, I, and bubble baths, you know? Ooh. Bubble baths <laughs> and rose petals is good. Yeah. So what, what, is your, what are your thoughts, Sequoia? Uh, similarly, uh, like, like I said, you know, I feel self-care is a, a personal journey. Um, it, I find it's a form of self-defense for us in a positive way. Um, you know, we have to protect ourselves. We are the only ones that can help and save ourselves. The system was not made and designed for us. It was made and designed to keep us down. Um, it's doing exactly what it was designed for. We are working and striving to progress and make it better. Um, but at the same time, don't forget you. Don't forget you have to take care of you because if you don't take care of you and love yourself, you can't get out there and do anything else, right? So let's remember who we are and our ancestors um, speak those words, live those words, love yourself, be out there, you know, I love you guys, beautiful people, let's keep it going and moving, and ujama, all of that, you know? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so release people to close this out, release any problems that got you, you know, here in the first place and replace outdated ideas with renewed perspective and what really works, revive your health. Ty Hawkins and Sequoia Carr Brown, thank you so much for your wisdom. We appreciate this. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Aloha. <laughs>